Good evening, everybody. This is the John Crow, and I wanted to do a really quick uh, just run through of something I had planned to add to my game during the uh, the jam most recently with round 21. But for one reason or another, it felt like it slowed it down. And two, three hours from finish, I had to make a, a few decisions to cut things that um, I'd really like to have kept. But uh, I think playability was more of a factor. And one of them for me is environment. I think environment plays a really big part in and an experience in the way a character or uh, an avatar or the, the gamer relates to it. And so one of the things you notice in an experience um, like the, uh, the golf experience that I built was that everything's alive. You know, it, it feels more organic. Um, and, and I didn't really want to, you know, make light of the non-animated assets that are in the marketplace. There's some fantastic ones. But, but one of the things that makes Jamaica Jamaica is just the life that you you feel in the environment around you it's it's unlike anything else and it's really the only way that you convey an experience like Jamaica in some small way shape or form uh, in the metaverse so you know when you look down to even like the tiny little ground plants um, they've all got just a little subtle amount of animation on them uh, and the timing in them is done intentionally in box edit so that they all work together it's the the gestalt that that kind of makes things happen um, these assets will be available for sale uh, in the marketplace and, and a whole other collection of Caribbean, Jamaican styled um, assets, environmentally focused like this. Um, but my real purpose for today was to talk about um, environmental effects like rain, uh, clouds, and what I wanted to really focus on was how you'd figure out something like lightning if you wanted to trigger that. And I had some cool lightning um, in the game, but it's what I had to take out. I think message broadcasters you know, traveling over a one by four map were probably uh, a bit much. And with all the logic of the golf clubs and the, the scoring and all that, uh, it, it's just too much maybe for the maker at this point. And, you know, maybe building back in smaller lands would help. Um, so anyways, if I jump into my, my assets in Vox Edit, I built uh, a rain uh, simulation um, and this, this actually needs some improvement. I, I actually built it, I think, two voxels, and these actually look more snow-like, and they're a little bit too white, so I'm gonna go back in and revisit this, but you'll get the idea. Um, so I've got this rain effect that I animated. It took, took a while to animate this in, in Vox Edit, uh, but my background is in computer graphics as a rigger, um, so I kinda know how to cheat my way around things and, and expedite workflows, and these are things that I'll cover when I get into a Vox Edit series of tutorials. Um, but let's say you wanted to have like a rain system kind of moving through your environment just to add like another layer uh, of an organic feel to it uh, with clouds, you know, how would you do that? Um, and then how, we, how might you trigger lightning? In Jamaica, the midday storms are, are famous for rolling through. They're like 20 minute storms that you could just literally shower in. They're as powerful as your bath um, and then they're gone. And they happen, you know, in the North Coast, um, you know, up in Negril. Uh, they'll happen once a day regularly at the same time as the moisture comes down from from the hills or the humidity um, so i'm going to use a rain effect here and you can see it goes up pretty high uh, i may layer a few of those together um, one of the things that this doesn't work with is if you are uh, trying to build like let's say a house that you're going into a shelter you'd have to cheat the rain and, and kind of carve out an area where it, it doesn't affect the um, the house and the collisions there and one of the users, I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's Gikis, Gikis, Gikis. Anyways, I think this is one of his cloud. It is one of his clouds from the last game jam, and I haven't really got around to building clouds yet. And um, anyways, I'm going to use his here, and let's just put it like kind of up in the, the sky. So let's say we have this storm cloud passing through, and I guess we could deal with this in one of two ways. We could deal with it as a platform. Or we could deal with it as a um, a bird, bird behavior. I think that's the only ones we really have access to. Um, but I'm going to jump open into the, the hierarchy. Uh, I spent a lot of time in the hierarchy parenting things, as I'm sure a lot of you do, and it's a big point of my frustration. And I think I'm going to end up with carpal tunnel syndrome a lot earlier in my life than I expected. Um, but let's just call this one uh, the cloud parent. And I know you can't see underneath there, but naming is super important and a lot of other users videos have um, referred to this as well 
Uh, I'm also going to take the rain and just if it's in a large scene, you'd have to kind of give it the same root so that the hierarchy can find it. So I call it cloud here, underscore. And I see I can't even see underneath here. So let's see. Let's grab that. So that's called TSP. So let me just call this cloud underscore. And then this one here should be cloud rain. So why isn't that showing up? I'm actually filtering. C L O U D. There we go. Um, so there's the cloud, there's the rain. So I'm going to call this one the, the parent. And for those of you from computer graphics, this is kind of basic hierarchy 101. Um, so now the rain is in the local, it's in its own local space, but it's relative to the, to the parent. And I'm going to grab that rain. I'm just going to slide it over and move it up. And if you were using multiples of these, uh, the main thing to keep in mind would be to make sure that you don't get like a banding pattern. If you start duplicating stuff like this, you'll notice that like some of the the gaps that I might not have built properly will eventually start to show up, uh, almost like um, strata in in a way, I guess liquid strata. So if you're going to duplicate the the rain, you know, just take it and um, come on and offset it a little bit. And of course, like rotate it um, because you need the randomness in there, um, but just kind of like offset it a little bit. And and usually the the player is you know. Like, this tall um, so they can't really tell if the rain isn't really working there or not so you could bring this down a lot to kind of cycle through some different rain, rain elements in the lower um, the lower areas and uh, for some reason this I think it's because my, my avatar let me just go avatar here and move that portal out of the way this thing gets in the way uh, let's go back and filter my cloud let's try that yeah, for some reason it doesn't look like it's... Oh, it's because I've got two of them. Let me delete one. There we go. So yeah, so you can see that you can kind of move it there and you're, you're leaving a quite a large gap like right here. Oh, it's again my Control-Alt-D from for Bandicam that's doing this. So anyways, I'm just going to stagger it kind of like that. And I'll make one more, Control-D, and let's randomly rotate it. And I'll shift this one up. I think I've got some latitude both up and down. So if you look at the three pivots now, we've got one low. Uh, this one could probably be like here and there. So almost like a like a step pattern. And this one's not good. Just so they're three different heights, and then we'll parent them to the main object. One thing I found, by the way, and I found really useful, if I'm dragging a child onto the parent, um, if you drag up straight up like this like click and drag you're likely not going to parent you know sometimes when you have high uh, complex scenes 70 percent of the time instead if i dragged like out this way and then pulled it right onto the object there i could up my odds to like 90 percent. i don't know what's the deal with the hierarchy but i think they know that and they're going to fix it anyways i'm going to parent that that's good so now when i move the cloud i've got the parent um, local space affecting the children essentially like putting them inside of that cloud matrix um, then I'm going to go and add a um, decoration to it uh, sorry not a decoration I'm going to add a, a platform to it and we have a really small scene here so let's see which direction negative 50 so I'll push it that way um, yeah that's probably good enough so like if I started it over here maybe something like that uh, we can move that way. And I guess if you wanted the wide end of the cloud, you kind of go this way and then just turn it to your um, to your z-axis, something like that. Uh, and then I'm going to pull in a lightning bolt. So I'm going to go lightning. So I built I built some a couple of different lightnings, interestingly enough. I have like a crackling lightning. Uh, where is it? Right here. And you notice when I plant it, it's... Let's go and find that. So there's my lightning bolt. Uh, the reason I build it like this, uh, and it's not actually animating now, that's the idle lightning bolt. Let's bring in the attack bolt. Grab that. Uh, the idea was that, actually this is facing the wrong way, that I was trying to build like an animated lightning strike. So it kind of emit, hit, and then turn off. Uh, but lightning hits so fast anyways that you can pretty much get away with just one frame. So I have two different lightning bolts here. Uh, let's bring in lightning bolt two. 
And again, notice that its pivot is up high because obviously these are are pointing down. They're, they're starting up high and pointing down. So you need the pivot in box edit in the right place. So I'm gonna drop that there. I don't even know which way I'm pointing. Let me just check my character out. Okay, so I got that. Oh yeah, that's right, because I moved my, I moved my, uh, uh, my avatar. So I'm gonna actually take that uh, lightning bolt. I can just parent it right now. I don't really need to, to name it. So that goes there. I don't like the jumping. That kind of annoys me. And let's put it up in the clouds here. And that's kind of where we want that, maybe that lightning bolt to appear. And if I was to now go back and bring my portal. Like so. Yeah, so that'll kind of work. So the thing that I want to do though, is I actually want to replace that lightning bolt and I'm going to use an asset spawner for this. So let's grab um, a conch shell or a Nautilus and we'll call it um, lightning spawner. Oh, sorry. Let's go lightning spawn, there it is. And uh, there's no attributes on this. That's why I use the Nautilus shell. I like the, the numpad. And there's one that somebody else built. Um, I think Gabok or, or Argicus. I can't remember which one. But someone built one. And it's uh, actually a bit more functional than the numpad. Um, but they come with, with uh, components and behaviors. And I'm always having to remove them. So I'm going to go and add an asset spawner to this one. Uh, I want to spawn here. I don't want this to be invisible while it's doing its thing. So I'm going to turn that off. And I'm actually going to spawn that, that lightning bolt. Um, what did I use? Two? Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go edit this. Uh, so we're spawning the lightning bolt. Let's give it a tag. Uh, let's call it lightning bolt. And as far as components go, uh, I'm going to want to give it a health component because I'm going to uh, end up spawning it and then killing it straight away. And as far as physics go, uh, we don't really need to have any uh, any collisions at all. It's not going to live long enough. Uh, we just don't want to deal with them. And as far as the message required, let's have it trigger with a simple message, lightning on. And uh, for now, let's just turn off the, the delay. Uh, let's also give our Nautilus a tag just in case. We'll call it Lightning Spawner. I don't think we're going to need one. So we've got our name, we've got our tag, we've got our asset behavior on there. And uh, we just, just need to be able to trigger this now. So uh, let's turn it off. And uh, let's move it up into the sky. Uh, again, I wish I could clear this, but I'm not really using that right now. Kind of move it into the clouds here and we're gonna have to parent this into the into the hierarchy as well so i'm just kind of lining it up roughly where i i put my my proxy or at least what i call a proxy my stand-in uh, so yeah like right about there and then let's give this a name so we can let's call it cloud underscore lightning spawn so if i do a filter cloud i can take that spawner and drop it in and then let's just uh, filter by lightning. I don't need that anymore, so we can delete that. Cool. So now what we have to do is set up the logic to trigger this. I'm just going to save this in case we crash at some point. And um, for that, I'm going to use another platform on the ground with uh, a speaker detector and a couple of additional health components that I can use. Um, so in terms of that, we're going to start by, uh, let's bring up the shell. Let's uh, give it a speaker component. We need to detect um, an object that's moving back and forth on a platform. So let's just call this, uh, let's do our error check here. Call that detected. And we're not going to wait for a message. We're going to use the detect entity and we're going to use a small range. So there's a kind of a small trigger point. And it's going to detect uh, an object called lightning trigger. 
we don't care about the well let's let the message display for a couple seconds we want it repeatedly and when it detects this trigger i'm going to copy that let's speak the message uh, lightning dot on that message i sent on the spawner earlier so essentially something is just going to be moving back and forth and anytime it comes within the vicinity of our speaker it's going to send the message lightning on up to the spawner and we're going to get uh, the spawn there's my duplicate again uh, so we need another object for this uh, let's use the numpad in this case and let's replace the behavior with a platform and let's have it go negative 10 nope actually that should be enough and make sure it goes over top of here and so let's call this one um what did i call it i think i have a paste here lightning trigger and we don't need the indicator on here uh, but we do need the platform and we could wait either way if we want to let's just quickly look at the logic in here we don't need to look at everything looks good there so if i tab in now uh, where is it? there we go so we're getting this object moving back and forth is it triggering our lightning there we go so it's triggering our lightning now but the problem is the lightning is staying there so it's hard to actually tell if it's um oh there we go so now it's triggering another one over there but they're not they're not dying so let's fix that so when we spawned the lightning uh, let's go back under cloud and we go to our lightning spawner we gave it a health component and because at, at this point anyways you can't edit these default um, components or behaviors that you add to spawned objects or dropped objects uh, the best you can do is use their default and the default of course is the kill message so all you need to do is know that and if you know the tag that you're uh, trying to send the message to in this case we're sending the tag to lightning bolt uh, you can just use a, a health component to do that. Uh, so let's let's do this. Let's go and drop in our shell, and we'll call this shell our uh, lightning kill. And give it the tag lightning kill. And what are we doing here? We're adding a health component to it. And we need something to destroy this health component to kill it. Uh, but we need to set this one up in a specific way. Instead of destroying it, we're going to reset it. Uh, just a note, if you're resetting um, a health component, it doesn't work with hierarchy. If you want to do that, you need to use respawn to tag. Um, so for my golf clubs, that was a big, big part of it. And reset doesn't work. It doesn't port along with your hierarchy when it's killed, but respawn to tag does the trick. Um, and anyways, we're not doing hierarchy here, so we're good. A death delay, I think we should be good here for now. Let's uh, just leave it at zero. Let's instant death message is kill, and the message is sent to the tags. Lightning bolt. Uh, we don't want to see the, uh, the life bar display and know it's not invincible so we're resetting uh, i think this this should do it pretty well i think actually we can even get away with minus two let's let's try that um sorry and the instant the message it sends should be killed I'm sorry i got that wrong what's going to kill this to cause it to reset uh i guess let's see what happens if we use the uh the same lightning on message I can't remember if that will work I, I think it should um, let's see so I'm also going to slow down this platform too it's traveling at 9.1 uh, blocks per second I just duplicated that again so we could probably take that down something slower let's go to like three so it takes a bit longer and let's have it wait for two seconds at either end um, these would all be hidden so those they should have no collisions on them turn those off so if 
right tab in now. So it, notice that it's okay. So they're they're getting killed off. Oh, it's obvious. So what's happening is these are moving back and forth. So the detectors are working. But by the time it is the lightning bolt is generated, it's moved past the the point to kill it. So I'm thinking uh, that we could probably just de either delay it on this one. Let's uh, go back into that health component. Let's set the death delay to like um, 0 0.1. See what that does. Cool, so that's starting to work now. And let's just do another little test here. Uh, can I get away with just zero? Actually, let's try. Let's try minus one. So minus two is not working. It, uh, why is that? Minus one. There we go. Yeah, so you can see at minus one, it just gets left behind, right? That's not good. So yeah, we have to go. Let's try zero. Zero might give us just a quicker uh, kill on that. Yeah. I wonder if we can... So in the distance, that uh, actually looks pretty good. But I wonder if we can even, like... So if negative 1 is too little, what if we can go, like, negative 0.5? Play the kind of back and forth game, or this is the fun part about the sandbox, right? You just keep kind of just hammering away at this thing. What if we enlarge the detection range so that it it has the opportunity? Well, let's find out. So let's set that to minus two again. So even while it's receiving that message, it should be receiving that message in a much larger area over here now. So I'm thinking should kill it off and that's a negative and uh, so what we need to do is yeah let's go back to this let's go back to a small detection range and let's set this to uh, 0.25 and that should do it uh, you take all of these and hide them here. Uh, there could also be a little bit of latency because we're moving up quite a distance. I'm going to take that cloud and I just want to put it like, I guess it's a, we're on a small map so I can't really go that far. So let's maybe take this to like 25. Oops, the other way. Negative 25. Like so. Okay. You can see here that you're, you know, the cloud actually is traveling a bit too fast. You know, clouds are, don't travel that quickly. So if you want to kind of start to dial this in a bit more, and I get really picky. Um, I teach visual effects. Oh, there we go. The platform's too fast. I teach visual effects um, outside of kind of what I'm doing here. 0.8 would be something useful. So I get kind of picky with, with simulation. I teach simulation specifically. There we go. So now you can see that the slower speed, this is still going to evolve nicely over the, you know, the life of the cloud's motion. Um, Gikus has some animation. You can see that he's done with the blocks in there. Uh, but now you've got this nice rain system with lightning off in the distance. And, you know, maybe having like three or four different forks of lightning um, could be kind of interesting. Uh, so, you know, that's... Kind of what I like to do, I really build the environments out, give them give them a personality. Your environment really is a, is a character uh, in your experiences. And the more you can integrate your users, the more you can make them feel a part of it, um, the more you're, you're selling your experience. Again, you can see my rain. I'm not seeing any stratification there. I can't see any obvious kind of repeat patterns other than the fact that, you know, up and down it's repeating, but there's no horizontal repeats. Like I don't see anything here that's really sticking out. Uh, I note that it is dying off a bit early. Let's see if I kind of run forward here. It could just be clipping, uh, 
but no. So you can see I could do something about that. So let's quickly go and fix that. Uh, I'll take those. And let's just pull them down. And just to show you, you notice that from up high, and again, maybe there's a little bit of a, a fudging point here that you would need to you know, that, work with. Eventually, your user can't see that the the rain is not really coming from the clouds because the height differential is too big. Unless you're going vertical in mountains and things like that, then you're going to have to build a, the real McCoy. Uh, but now I'm getting the rain coming right through and the character, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, <laughs> the last thing, make your rain have no collisions. That would be really useful because uh, you can't go singing in the rain if you can't sing in the rain, right? So I'm just going to wait for the rain to hit. So you get some pretty neat looking lightning and even the, the deletion on the lightning, it kind of works. Uh, and I could conceivably, let's uh, take that spawner back. And I know this, this video is going quite long for, um, what should have been a, a short video. I'm just going to spawn, cloud lightning spawn. Uh, if I bring this down, I might be able to take advantage of that kind of kill pop burst thing because it is hidden so you might get a bit of illumination there you know kind of works it might might work for you might not but again you can see that the kill point of the lightning bolt is so um, slow that the, the position doesn't really you don't really notice the position uh, and remember as well you could um, even do like you know, take that spawner just give it, I think this should work. Let's just, you know, tilt it a bit. Should give it some more dynamic. Yeah, so you're kind of getting something like that, right? You even get a little bit of motion as well, too. I think triggering, you know, a bunch of these different lightning bolts in different areas would be the ideal. So now you can kind of go under this thing. And got a nice rain system. Anyways, I hope uh, this has given you some ideas for the upcoming Game Jam. My name is the John Crow. This has been an entirely too long video. I will talk to you later.